Sanyu Hit Selector. It is 88.2 Sanyu FM and I am Crystal. I'd like to welcome my guest on Celeb Select today. The absolutely lovely Rema Namakula is here with me. Hello, my dear. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm very good. And you? Good. I'm good. Before we go further, I have been told I have to pass on a compliment that you have the cutest dimple. <laughs> it's coming from me too, but that's someone else who works at Sanyo. Like, no, 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 you must tell Aww. Rema. You must tell Rema. Um, I'm tell flattered. Me, I, I know to you it's just <laughs> part and parcel of you. Mm. Has it always been like, oh, your dimple? Or when you were little, people were like, hey, what's that? When I was little, it wasn't a big deal. Like, I was like, mm. I didn't know, like, we're like, s- a big deal. Mm-hmm. It was just nothing because. I've seen them ever since I started, you know, mm-hmm. getting to know, seeing myself in the mirror and all that. So it was in pictures. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's just that after growing up, people are like, oh, you have dimples. Oh, they're so deep. Oh. <laughs> they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rema, welcome to Celeb Select. Thank we want to so get much. to know you better. Yeah. Uh, it's so nice to have you here since we, you, you're such a busy Pleasure. woman. Can I say one of the hardest working women, I think, <laughs> in Uganda right now? Mm. Huh? You're a busy, busy woman. So take us back. Tell us about the little Rema who did not notice <gasps> that she had dimples. <laughs> mm-hmm. Where were you that born? That little Rema comes from a very humble family. Mm-hmm. Um, family of five. Uh, four girls and one boy. And mm-hmm. she's the last born. Mm. You're the baby. And, yeah. You're the baby of yes, the family. Yes, I'm the baby. <laughs> uh-huh. Um... What else? Uh, she was just there. I didn't know I could sing before. Like, mm-hmm. I was just there. What kind I of child were you? Were you quiet? Were you naughty? No, uh, I was quiet when there was need be. Okay. And then I was, you know, stubborn when it was time for being, you know, crazy. Okay. So and you didn't give your now, parents if, any trouble? No, not really. I don't sure? remember. Mm. I think I did. Who doesn't? Like, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. everyone does. I mean, mm. it happens to everyone. And, uh, um yes i grew up with my sisters and uh i lost my mom when i was going to senior two mm-hmm. and um that must have been a rough time yeah it was were you close with your mom yeah mm-hmm. very so sorry very close because my other sisters are like big women they're old women like you know oh, so there by the time big... she had me there's a big age gap okay so by the time she had me and my brother mm-hmm. uh, it was only us even my brother is a little bit older than me so oh. it was me and my mother like all the time her last born like mm. you couldn't say anything bad about me mm-hmm. in her face you know mm-hmm. like it was me every time oh Mwana mama, you know. Mm. Mm. Losing a parent is hard, especially at a young yeah. age. It is very hard. I, I remember I was like, no, I don't want to go to school anymore. <laughs> I was like, what mm-hmm. do I study for? I wanted to make my mother proud. She's all gone. And I had lost my dad earlier. Mm. So I was like, what am I studying for? Mm-hmm. Then my sisters were like, you're going back to school in the next two days, okay? <laughs> <laughs> two days? <laughs> yes. Ah, that's tough I had love to go right back there. To school because they picked me from school yes. to come for burial. Yes. And it was close to exams. Mm-hmm. So I had to go back. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that was growing up really fast. Yeah, I grew up so fast. And mm. I remember the I wasn't so happy for the first, after my mom died. Then the next, yeah, I was, I was dull. I had a dull moment. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's understandable. I was like, uh, I I didn't want anything to do with books. I was like, no, I'm dead. I, I, she used to motivate me, you know. Mm-hmm. And I felt like everything I was doing, I was doing it for her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But after going up, like after some time, I was like, no, now I have to do everything for myself, for mm-hmm. me. For yeah. you, for yeah. you. So maybe you can remind us which schools you went to? 
Uh, I went to Kitante Primary School mm -hmm. and then I went to St. Valley Good Embassy Mokono. Okay. And I was there for six years. So that's where you got the news. Mm. Then you said you, you didn't know you could sing. When no, did you start I, I, I singing? Didn't know like you had a really serious. good voice. Huh? I didn't know that I really had a good voice. Okay. I realized when I was, uh, I think when I was about to join secondary, P7 there, that's when I was like, ooh. Because we used to have like MDD mm -hmm. eh, and we used to like sing. And teachers were like, nah, she could take on this song. She could take on this other song. I was like, why me? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know why they were picking on me. You know what? You have to lead this song and this and this other song. I was like, I don't know. Okay. And then uh, as I was joining Senior One, mm -hmm. I think I started feeling it. Oh. Like, oh, I think I sound good. When did you start becoming <laughs> popular at school? <laughs> yes, uh, in secondary school, I was. I was. You're but popular. primary, I was just like any normal kid. Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Mm. So that means you were on stage from a young age then? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. I was. And it has been part of me. Like, I didn't just jump into this. It has been, uh, it has been like a journey. Music has been in my life. The whole way. Yeah. So do you still get like butterflies and get nervous when you're on stage? <laughs> because it sounds like from a little age you were like... No, I do. You do? I do. Mm -hmm. Depending on the particular audiences. Because sometimes you're used to a particular audience. And then you get to sing for some people that, you know, are mm -hmm. hard to... I don't want to call them hard to play. <laughs> <laughs> some people look really serious, like very like... Mm -hmm. like oh, okay. How do I start, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, once you sing a song or two, you get used. They stand up, they dance, you mm. know. Sometimes we judge people by the way they're looking, the seriousness on their faces. But once you do one song or two, mm -hmm. you feel better. It happens. It happens. It really happens. But that's a good point, you know. I don't, maybe a lot of people don't think about musicians and having to think about the audience, mm -hmm. you know, who mm -hmm. they're going to sing for because it's different. No, I really think about it. And mm -hmm. some audiences don't need a lot of, energy mm -hmm. others just want you to sing mm -hmm. they listen and then give you a hand clap after <laughs> it's soft one but they're soft happy <laughs> and they're having a good time sometimes they don't even have to clap they're just like mm -hmm. like oh so are you more comfortable like with a small group of people or like a huge audience with hundreds of people what's more I challenging a huge audience mm -hmm. in comparison yeah. to just a few yeah because like those you know acoustic sessions where you're just sitting there uh, why? Why do you prefer? Those are for once in a while. Why I think I would love those like twice a year. Mm -hmm, twice you know? a year. But those others, they know how to party. They know how to have a good time. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. you leave that place sweating and they're like, yes. Yeah, they give COVID. back to you, you know? uh, as, yes. much, as much as yeah. much. You feel the love. Like sometimes if the audience is so small, you don't know who's going to, you know, go with the flow. Like it's... It's a bit worrying, you mm. know. Yeah. It is challenging, I can imagine. Mm. Then you also feel like all the eyes, I think they're all... Yeah, hey, eyes on you, they're all concentrating, like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you went to... Uh, you said you were in St. Balakudembe, is it? Yeah. All the way until Essex. Yes. Okay, and then after that, what happened? And then after... <laughs> you didn't take a break off, like, during your S4 vac and say, let me sing a bit, or... No, 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 no. Mm. I joined Chambogo, mm. but I was there briefly. I didn't finish. Mm. Okay, you knew and what then, you wanted. No, it, it's not that, happened. but season sequel came along the way and I was like, I need to give this thing a break. I, I started loving the attention. I loved the airplay. Like, it was so, it was overwhelming to me. I was like, oh, okay. I'll join books late. <laughs> Are you being honest? <laughs> but it probably was pulling you <laughs> the whole time. The whole time. Yeah, it was. It wasn't easy because uh, before campus, mm -hmm. I used to do lots of backing in the VAC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to do backups in studio and then stage backups. Ah. Like for big, big artists. Okay. And yeah, and it felt good. I used to get some little money. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, now. You felt a bit independent. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Go and buy nice dress those things yeah things that are important to us as women yeah here. you get some kind of sweep <laughs> and you know <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm going to ask you now for your first song <laughs> i like that uh, your first song you requested ed sheeran's perfect yeah mm -hmm. why this song i love it uh it puts me in that mood that i it's been a long time since i felt that way mm. uh I remember those days of the Backstreet Boys, mm -hmm. uh, 
for each to man. Like how I used to feel when I was at school. You listen to a song and you just want to learn every word. You get you a feel book. like they've sung it for you. You get a book mm. and a pen. You write Aww. every word. You're like, I want to learn this song. Like it gives you. It puts you in that mode of her. I used, it must. It puts me in the high school mode. You know when we used to have like. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, uh, uh, you um, can't stop there. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Mm-hmm. We used to have what? No, it just gives me a good feeling. Well, people would write letters. <laughs> she is dodgy. You write something. letters and you put dedications. <laughs> and then you write. <laughs> it's no, it a beautiful good. song. Here it is. Ed Sheeran's Perfect. Well, I found a girl. Beautiful and sweet. Now you talked about, you know, after you finished your Essex, you studied for a short time, then you started making some money, yep. a little bit of money, and you decided to press pause on your studies at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did that go? Was it... It wasn't easy for mm-hmm. my family. Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 we have to finish school. Like, it... Was they it your sisters or like... didn't your, like it. Your, like, no, my sisters. Your sisters. No, they're like, like, they were like my parents, I mean. Mm-hmm. They were much older. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they didn't like it. Okay. Uh, they're like, do you think you've made the right decision? Mm-hmm. How are you going to survive? You know, and slowly by slowly, they want, they get, they got used to it. And mm-hmm. when Susan Sugo came out and they're like, I think, there might I think be she can take on there. this music thing. Because mm-hmm. they weren't sure. Somehow they felt like I was still very young. Okay. And I really joined the industry very young. Yes. I, I was mean, young. Yes. And they were worried. Because it's a tricky, I mean, mus- oh. music, and this young industry women, is and, not easy and, and, and what you girls. keep hearing, thank you, yeah. about girls being taken advantage of, all kinds of things. Oh, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Someone just looks at you and they're like, oh, she's just joking. You think you can, you know, make it in this industry Mm -hmm. full of men? Mm. And even the other females in there are, like, much older. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you even thinking? Just go finish your books. In your experience, were they supportive? After some time. Mm -hmm. Because remember, they wanted me to finish school. Mm. And I wasn't able to do that. Okay. So they're like, just there. They're like, okay, she's been a good girl. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't think she's going to, you know, become wild just right away <laughs> so let's give her time mm. and then that's when you know season sickle came in and i think for some t- after some time they enjoyed the attention as well they're like yes that's our girl <laughs> yeah that's my sister yeah that's what happened they're like oh, that's yeah we know her <laughs> that's my little sister and you know okay. you know how it feels mm-hmm. <laughs> to be accepted and celebrated by your family yeah actually. it's a nice feeling it's mm. a good feeling so i mean okay for many people the stories are when they started out it was very very different difficult mm. very difficult it's never easy mm-hmm. and this uh musicians when it, we're taken for granted mm-hmm. it's not that people are taken seriously mm-hmm. you know mm. you're like a musician people you know they they you, ins- you inspire them they worship you in a way mm-hmm. they look up to you they like they respect you you know you get in a place and they're like oh Rema, oh you know you get those free get passes you know mm-hmm. but before it wasn't like that musicians were looked at as a joke like what are you doing musician mm-hmm. singer and like like it's just a part time thing maybe you look like a comedian now. to everyone <laughs> honestly <laughs> ouch ouch okay yeah. so so in terms of like you, you talked about doing your, your backup vocals in studio mm. and for a lot of people on stage mm. I believe you worked with Halima and I'm a, uh, yeah. back in the day as well well yeah. did she mentor you as well really well a lot mm-hmm. she introduced me to biblical mm-hmm. and ooh and that was another chapter yes uh-huh. <laughs> okay working and, uh, with mm-hmm. she did a lot because uh, she she had a she had a studio no end studios it's mm-hmm. still there mm-hmm. not very active like before but she used to tell me wake up in the morning go to studio you need to learn how people record music mm-hmm. how do they stand when they're recording how do you behave how do you control your voice how do you sustain how do you breathe like lots of things mm-hmm. and I used to wake up every day go to studio and i even got like so many friends musicians they're like oh hi how are you i like it felt good i mm. was there and musicians could come record their music I was like oof i just saw this one i used to go like oh <laughs> can you believe mm-hmm. so and so is here and <laughs> it helped me get rid of the excitement mm-hmm. when i joined the industry it wasn't a big deal to be around artists because okay. i grew up around artists i used to see them i used to like it wasn't a, 
it wasn't so much of a big deal. Mm-hmm. And then you also appreciated the work. I do. That has to go into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of people think it's about the nice hair and the clothes. But it's so much more. Not really. Mm -hmm. Like you put in a lot. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even your efforts might might not be seen or appreciated because people don't know how much you put in. Mm -hmm. But we put in a lot. Okay. Okay. Now Halima introduced you to Bebe Kool. Mm -hmm. And uh, you started working with him. Mm -hmm. Um, That experience for you, I imagine that was also another step. Yeah. I know. It kind of ended uh, on a shaky note, uh, but then... People just exaggerated the whole situation. Oh, they did. It, wasn't, it wasn't that bad. You were fine. And it people... wasn't that bad. Ah. It wasn't... <laughs> honestly. Okay. It, <laughs> it wasn't that bad. Because mm. if it was, you would have seen us, us exchanging words, you know, on Facebook, on everywhere. Mm-hmm. But even when I met that guy, I greet him like, hello, how are you? Like, then move on. Mm-hmm. And he's talked about you often and, you know, being proud of what you've been able to do. Hmm. So you decided at that point just to go and do your own thing. Yeah, I think I felt like I had grown. Like, as much you know as when you the could. time is right, mm-hmm. it, things just happen. Okay. You don't have to force anything to happen, but it just feels right. You're like, this is the right time. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like having babies. Mm-hmm. People, when you get pregnant, even though someone tells you, you know, you need to get rid of that baby. And, your mind tells you, you know what? I'm having this baby. You start feeling like a mother right away. Mm-hmm. You know, when things are right, you just feel they it. fall into place. Yes, they just fall into place. And I just felt like it was the right time for me to go solo. Mm-hmm. Who was supporting you at that time? Uh, <laughs> I didn't have anyone in particular, honestly. Because normally you find like you have someone who's telling you, okay, you, like, you believe you're ready, but someone else is also giving the encouragement, like, no, the you confidence. Can on. You, you know, you'll survive. Uh, I didn't have people, any specific person pushing wow. me. Like, I had friends, but they were scared. Mm-hmm. They were scared, just like my boss then was scared. Like, <laughs> he was, they all didn't know that I could manage on my own. They, mm-hmm. they, they couldn't believe it. Because mm. I looked young. I looked like... You know, and this industry full of monsters are like, mm, <laughs> monsters. how is she going to survive this industry? <laughs> but I was like, but yes. Eat you up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, watch me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And especially a beautiful young lady. I mean, I can imagine. There were a lot of sharks. I know. Mm, how did you but navigate? I survived. The water God is great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, so after you left Baby Cool, what mm. was the plan of action at that point? Um, by the time I left, mm. uh, there were some promoters that were like, you know, we can do, we can, we can organize a concert for you. People love you, whatever. Mm. Like, people believe in you. You can have a concert. About the concert, I wasn't sure. Okay. About starting a solo career, I was sure. I was like, no, whatever happens, I'll move on. Mm-hmm. I'll survive. Like I will. And then uh, I was like, no, I'm not ready for a concert. Okay. I'm not ready. But after some time, uh, I think someone like tried to tell people about it. And people were like, oh, really? And people received it positively. And I was like, are these people serious? I don't even have enough songs to sing for like an hour. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't, I didn't have songs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this guy went and was like, I'm going to give you money. I'm going to, to organize. Mm-hmm. Then I just, I give you your money. You know, I pay you, but I'm going to organize and everything. Okay. It's like, okay. I haven't need money to shoot videos. <laughs> Give me the money. <laughs> uh-huh. you <know>. Okay. <laughs> but you were still, I, you were just, you were surprised. Money. I was, uh, till the day, like even on the concert day, the day mm-hmm. of the show, I was, I was surprised. I looked at these people sitting in big numbers. I was like, look at this. Ones. <laughs> what am I going to sing for you? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, eh, these okay, people have come to see me. I just couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, mm-hmm. I was shocked. Mm-hmm. I knew this guy was g- like, I was like, okay, you give me the money. But I knew he wasn't going to get his money back. But that day, mm-hmm. the place was so packed. Mm-hmm. And everywhere we went, the place was packed. I was like, okay, now yeah. this is a good start for me. A very good start. Oh, I, I remember so, at the like, end of the concert, you broke down because you... W- I just couldn't believe it. Mm. I just couldn't believe it. Oh, even like the time I spent singing, in there, I was crying like... A- <laughs> <laughs> like 
I was shocked the whole time. I, I just couldn't wait for the show to end. Mm -hmm. And then I bring it all out. Mm -hmm. I cried for like, I don't know, like 30 minutes just there. Mm -hmm. Wow. It was a great start for me. Powerful moment for yeah, you. Huh? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you now for your second song, your second request. Superman. Um, Superman. Waikiki Benda. Yeah. Mm hmm uh there's something about that song first of all my daughter loves it i don't know why it's uh, a nice song and it is but <laughs> she loves it so much mm -hmm. and uh i think she made me love it you okay. know how kids love a song and they're like they sing it every time <laughs> i was like okay and i gave the song attention and i loved it mm -hmm. it is great and he's a great artist fresh new full of life and coming up it. really fast yeah mm -hmm. Very. Things are happening, big things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. It is time when the time is right, things mm -hmm. just put themselves in place. You just don't know how it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Here it is Superman Waiki Benda. Let me be your Superman, let me be your master planner. Girl, tonight I'm in your corner. corner. Ah. When you look back now, is there like one song that for you is like really really special for uh, maybe you're going through a rough time or a beautiful time and it's the one song you go back to and you're like <laughs> everything was perfect with that song really do you have one eh. i love them all and mm. i don't normally sing about myself but you sing about I love i sing about love mm -hmm. and at times it's not what i'm going through mm -hmm. like you know but I sing for others out there and mm. I can't choose a particular song because mm -hmm. I love them all okay. equally, by the way. Mm -hmm. Equally? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there's some musicians that are like, mm, I love all my songs, but there's this one. Uh -uh. I love them all. Okay. I love them all. all honestly. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, to other people out there, it sounds like almost like it wasn't so difficult for you. Because really? you kind of, I mean, because when you're like, you know, I said I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. I mean, giving up school and everything was falling into place. What were the challenges that people did not see happening but in the background? People didn't see, and they don't know how many years I was in the background. Mm. Four plus years, like I was there, mm -hmm. backing people, backing those big artists. It wasn't easy, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, people only give me much attention. Well, I had already come out, like, you know, um, now I've already broken through, everyone knows me. They're like, now, if things are moving smooth for her, mm -hmm. it wasn't that easy, you know, because I was young still. Ooh. And people were, you know, how they take you for granted. I think you are joking. And, you know, there's monsters in the industry. Mm -hmm. And they just want to take <laughs> advantage of you, yes. you know. And uh, it wasn't easy. And, mm. and I think because I'm a girl, I was like, you know, it's not easy for females in the industry. I wanted to ask you about that. Like, it's did you get support from easy. other women in the industry, though? No. Because I've heard that a lot, and it's a bit scary. Support? You know, they liked me, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, they find you, oh, Rama, how are you? I love you. I love your music, and that's all. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone gives you more time, they can tell you, no, you have to be careful. You know, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You're young. And you know this industry is not easy, but take your time. Don't rush with anything, you know. Mm. But it was so much of like protecting you, you know. It was I was there, and I had to make decisions for myself. You didn't have someone to talk to, to I mean, like other women in the industry. In the industry, yes. No. Wow. And also another thing we don't see so much of is is you know women getting together to do projects together as well. <laughs> if you've noticed, if you really think about it, no, there's something about women. Rare. I don't know. There's something about us. We have our different feelings towards different things, and mm. someone can have a different thought about you, mm -hmm. not because you did something wrong to them, not because you know you are bad, but just because they they just don't like you with no reason. You know, you know how women <laughs> are. They, someone just uh, doesn't like you, but they don't know why. They're like, I don't like her, but I don't even have a reason why. But I just don't <laughs> like her. You know. <laughs> oh, sadly, sadly. <laughs> but the guys get along, you know. Mm -hmm. They get along. Guys in the industry, they're always working together, supporting each other. Mm, you don't see that m with women enough. I think, I think it's going to start with that. me. Okay. Yes. Yay. 
have you heard have you heard mm-hmm. it's going to start with me and mm-hmm. female artists out there i'm coming <laughs> we need to be one come on we need to get together we need to work together and yes. please don't nice give me attitude i beg <laughs> It would be nice to see a lot of female <laughs> artists in Uganda come together and work on one project. Mm. I think that would be beautiful. That would be beautiful. Okay, so, uh, Tata Baby. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, did you date anyone else in the industry? <laughs> because that's like the first time we're like, oh eh? my. Okay, <laughs> big hearts in the sky. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> no, I never. Mm-hmm. And I don't think did I you? will ever. You didn't see your... Oh, okay. Yes. All right. And... <laughs> <laughs> That's Why? a big statement right there. No, the thing is, uh, he was the only person I dated in the industry. And mm-hmm. I don't think I can do that again. Really? Okay. Mm-mm. What was special about I don't even want my, my daughter to join the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Honestly. Mm-mm. Has it been... Well, you never know. Maybe in time, when she's old enough, it'll be very different. No, I'll take her away. (laughs) Like, (laughs) I want her to grow away from the industry. I don't even want her to know that music is nice, like singing is good or something. Uh I'll take her away. I will occupy her with other things. (laughs) I'll try to put her mind away from this whole Mm. music thing. Okay. Yeah. So what was it about Eddie Kenzo that caught your attention in the beginning? Um... uh, by the time I met him, he was he wasn't fam- like that famous, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. He was just a simple guy, down to earth. By the way, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, he was easy and very. He's an he's a very honest guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. and I liked his honesty. He's honest. He's he won't he won't smile if he doesn't want to smile. Mm, okay. You know, like. He was very honest, and that's what I liked about him. He was real. He was real. That like there wasn't anything fake about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I liked him. I like honest people. I like real people. Cause that's not easy to find. It's not. Mm-hmm. But he is that kind of person. Okay. Other right. people might think he changed with the, you know, with these other with the fame, <laughs> with the fame, and <laughs> but he's real. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then you mentioned earlier on, like, you know, you find yourself, you get pregnant, and then all of a sudden you don't think you're ready, but you are sure you wanted to have your, your baby. Yeah. Uh, you're a beautiful yeah. girl. I was shocked at first. Mm. But then I was like, no, let me have this baby. Mm-hmm. Because especially, I mean, speaking for the industry, a lot of women are like, oh, you know, now if I have a child, then I have to take some time off. And then I make... You lose your shape. You become fat. You you have to work out. You have to work out. It wasn't easy. But um, along the way, Mm -hmm. I loved the pregnancy. And Mm. people were surprised because I was the peak. I was at the peak. Yes. Of my career. Like, I was at the peak, like I was there, mm-hmm. you know. She's getting pregnant now. So many men are looking at her. Like, what, what did she do? <laughs> like, you know. I think that's why even musicians don't want to say if they're in a relationship or not. Because mm. you want to keep those, you know, fans that have those like a crush on you. The admirers. You want to keep the admirers. You, have to, you want to keep them around, you mm-hmm. know. You don't want to kill their mood, you know. And mm-hmm. it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. You are young. You're now pregnant. You're like, okay. How was your family? How did they take the, the I news? I think she's mm. done. Oh. She's, she won't be no more after, you know. But I believed in myself. That's the thing. I don't know. Mm. Uh, normally, I think I'm just too big-headed. <laughs> you think? I think. Because <laughs> okay. people tell me, like, most of the people are supporting something. And I'm like, no. You do I your own this. thing. I do my own thing. Mm. Oh, my sisters were shocked. You're pregnant? Are you serious? No. You joined the industry. You put uh, a pose on uh, your new books and then you're joining the industry and now you're pregnant. Mm. It wasn't easy, but when I look at my daughter, I feel like it's one of those greatest decisions I've ever made. I feel like I can't change it for anything in this world. I feel like, oof, I'm the luckiest woman in this world. Like, she gives me life. She gives me motivation. She, I wake up every day because I know she she needs to be okay. And... Her, I don't want to be stressed because I know she wants to see me happy. Mm. I work so hard because I want her to be like, no, my mom will handle that. Mm. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like I don't want her to be excited <laughs> by this other, by this 
anyone who will be like around her, you know, trying to tell her, you know, I can give you a heaven on earth. Mm-hmm. I want her to be like, okay. Yeah, but my mom, mom worked hard. If my mom can give me this, okay, now you must be... You must give me something better. Mm. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now your next song, Slowly from uh, Medi. Yeah. I love that song. Mm-hmm. Is there some reason or it's I just think it one gives, of those It gives songs. me the same feeling as Ed Sheeran's song. Uh, oh, it takes <laughs> you back to like the high school feeling. Yeah, it is sweet. Mm-hmm. Like, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like, oh, love is real. Love is sweet. Like, it is it is a beautiful song. I don't know that guy. I've not met him, and mm-hmm. I don't know, but I would even love to work with him one time. Yeah, because of that song, because that particular of song. This song. Yeah. All right, here it is. Slowly. What was so hard about dating? another musician someone in the industry sometimes you feel like you need that privacy mm. you need it it's not even just sometimes but everyone needs a private love life mm. I'm telling but you that must be rough it must be rough I mean mm. you're traveling there's stories about you here that's one of the saddest things about tabloids I know how have you dealt with it sometimes these things hurt mm. you know mm-hmm. and if it has matters to deal with the heart you know mm-hmm. I can it imagine hurts. It does hurt, um, but still, it makes you stronger. That it does. Yeah, at the same time, it makes you stronger. You like, I'm ready for whatever. You can say whatever. Last time you said that, and you know, it passed. You said this, it will pass, mm-hmm. and you are still talking more, and that will pass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. are you still together, or not at all? Because you you have a child that will never change, and yeah. you'll both be parents to your beautiful little girl that will uh, never change. Uh, You're not the first person to go through a rough spot. That's the thing. I think sometimes the hard bit is you feel like people are judging you, you know. Yet everyone goes through it. It's just unfortunately no. that you know the you're famous, so people are, are watching you. For now, we're just okay. You're just okay. Yeah. You're just there. Just there. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. Uh, just there. T- to mm. the men listening in, when a woman says that, eh, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not in a good place. <laughs> you're not in a good place. So how do you feel about love now? Because clearly you've been through a rough patch. Do you still feel like, you know, that you can fall in love again and again and again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. I like that. If my heart still beats, <laughs> I can fall in love a thousand times. Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, <laughs> how old is your little girl now, Ma? She's three. She's three. Mm. And, uh, you know, you are the people making other parents look bad. This little lady is making money alongside <laughs> mommy. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. And, oh, I thank God for her. And I'm happy that she's... She can pay her school fees already. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard? She can pay her own school fees. <laughs> yeah, she does. Now, when uh, when you were approached for Coke Studio Africa, that was, uh, what, what year was that, 2016? Yeah, 2016. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How is that for you? Because I, I can imagine, you know, that's like a, the next level. The Just continent. even thinking about it, mm-hmm. I feel so good. Like, it was one of those, it is still one of those moments that I... I cherish and I, it it was it was a great feeling first of all mm-hmm. to be selected to be part of part of Cox Studio 2016 and mm-hmm. who I got to meet these artists that I, I love so much. Mm-hmm. I met my crush. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know that we saw you. Now we look at these artists <laughs> from afar like oh Trey songs. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, <laughs> he's hot. He's hot. Mm-hmm. He. he like his heart and then you like and then you get to to meet him mm-hmm. talk to him mm-hmm. be near him take pictures with him for more than an hour <laughs> two hours three hours <laughs> Ooh, I'm the luckiest girl alive <laughs> 
okay. I remember Ooh. there's a picture you posted where your smile, I swear, was one ear to the other ear. Like, My dear. Mm. And all women were like, lucky woman, <laughs> look at her. <laughs> and all my friends knew, like, I was always talking about this guy, like, ooh, Trey songs. I could watch his live performances. He is hilarious. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> so my manager didn't tell me at first. Oh. He knew how I liked this guy. And he didn't tell you? He didn't tell me, like, Trey songs would be there. Ooh. So I was told about Two Face DBR mm-hmm. and uh, Yemi Aladay, Vanessa Day. Those are the artists. So, like, mm-hmm. You were going to work with those. And then we went to Kenya. Mm-hmm. So I had two weeks there. Most of the artists had like one week and then they left. I had two weeks. Mm-hmm. That week uh, for the Afri- African artists mm-hmm. and then the international. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then we did. So when the other week was about to start, he was like, you know what? They're bringing three songs. <laughs> I died. <laughs> uh-huh. I was like, no, he jokes a lot. I was like, yeah, Kayemba, like, please don't play. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be bringing that guy. Like, they can't bring that guy here. Like, three songs. Three songs. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I wish it's true. <laughs> then the guy arrives. I was just there looking like, so you were like for like the first time speechless, I, f- eh? I got to know how it feels when someone says Rima I love you like I love you I adore you and I never take my fans for granted ever since then because <laughs> I know how it feels I know how deep it can go uh-huh. I want I was there shocked I was like it's him and this guy looks good he looks good my like God <laughs> Tell us, tell us. No, like, we only see the videos. We don't know. Honey, mm-hmm. he looks just the way he looks in the videos. Mm-hmm. The skin is perfect. <laughs> he smelled good. <laughs> he was just there. And <laughs> uh-huh. It was just too much for me. Mm-hmm. And then I couldn't wait because he had. Um, we were we were we were divided into into two groups. Mm-hmm. He had to work with the other group first. Okay, like why not our group? <laughs> I want to be the one of the first people to hug him. <laughs> uh-huh. And then, <laughs> and then uh, I was supposed to work with him that same day, but in the afternoon. Okay, late afternoon. Um, since it was his first day. They took a lot of time. He was get, getting to learn so many things, how to deal with us. Mm-hmm. So they took more time. Okay. So and, they, they were, and they were like, uh, tomorrow morning. <laughs> you waited the, the whole day and nothing. Nothing. <laughs> You'll be working with Trey Songs tomorrow morning. I was like, okay, now. Let me take pics at least before okay. I go. Because there was a lot of security. Guy has like how many bodyguards. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know. You, you, they wouldn't allow you to get close to him okay, if you okay. were not working. Mm-hmm. And I wish it could be done here. Mm-hmm. Guys were professional. Everything was so on point. Oh, mm. So it was a great experience. It, is. So. it, it was. It was. And then the next I couldn't wait the next day. I mm-hmm. couldn't sleep. I called my friends. I was like, you guys, what do you want me to tell Trey songs? <laughs> <laughs> As if I could tell him anything, you know. <laughs> Besides the music, <laughs> they're like, "Oh, Rima, we envy you. Oh my, <laughs> you can tag that." All the different genres. You know, you have your East African music, West African. All these different artists bringing together different mm. sounds, and then it's live. I mean, it it must be challenging too. Yeah, it is because they give you a few minutes to write a song. Mm-hmm. Eh? Okay. Yes, because we did like original compositions, mm-hmm. and you come to studio and they're recording everything. Okay. So you have to think of the words mm-hmm. on camera. You know how that feels. Like, mm. you know, sometimes you can't think right. You know, the camera is just ahead of you. Mm. But they want the song to be delivered because, you know, they have their program like, by this day, these songs must be done. Mm-hmm. By this time, this must be done. Mm-hmm. It was challenging, I mm-hmm. swear. But by the time I left, I really felt good because I felt like I can write a song. Like, you know, I get, I got more experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can just write anything 
once someone gives me a beat or a track or something like that mm -hmm. you know and i'm so grateful to cox studio and no, I, all those other guys that were in there oh i can talk to them directly you know how you hide this <laughs> hi me and it feels good <laughs> that is super awesome it feels really good mm -hmm. <laughs> i know because i think you know much as it's a, a great platform let's say it's number mm -hmm. one as a huge platform for you but you, i think you come out of it you're learning so much more and like you said seeing how professionally things can be done yeah because that's a constant complaint about you know our lovely uganda that sometimes you may want to do things a certain way but it's challenging it is. I think a lot has to change besides... Like what? Like, you have those bodyguards, but mm -hmm. still, you're not making a lot of money to even, you know, pay them. Mm -hmm. They'll end up beating you or something. They'll end up leaving you to suffer, like, when, they feel, when there is need for them to come up and help you. Mm -hmm. They'll leave you, They're like... She doesn't even pay us. What? Like, I mean, it's not easy. We need to change oh, most of the okay, things. Okay, the dedication. It is. It mm -hmm. is a. We have a long way to go to get to that level of professionalism. Mm. We have a long way to go. Okay. But we'll get there. Mm. We'll get there. I believe that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're so excited. Your concert is coming up. Yeah. I think God was preparing me for serena yes because it was like a blessing in disguise. Like yes. Because when it comes serena. to serena, a lot of musicians are like. Ah! You know, I'm not looking at the numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I will appreciate if there are few. I'll sing for those like I'm singing for a whole stadium. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, if they make it in big numbers, you know, mm -hmm. the better. Okay. But it it depends on how you believe in yourself. Me, I believe in myself. I don't think I don't think you it. can do what you do. I, can, I don't think you can be a musician if you don't believe in yourself because then you you just con constantly fail. Every time sometimes something the people gets around hard. us mislead us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and we don't know why people are around us. Some people and uh, they're our friends just to dis discourage us, mm -hmm. just to make us feel small about ourselves, you know. Because mm -hmm. we have to, be, we have we have to be so careful when we are choosing friends, mm -hmm. you know, the people to be, the people around you, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes it's the energy they give you, the positive energy that makes you feel like, yes, you know. Mm -hmm. But you can be surrounded by people who have, first of all, low esteem, and then they don't want you to be, like, they don't want you to be bigger than what you are or bigger than them. And how mm. will you believe in yourself? Yeah, yeah. You know? That's true. Yeah. Okay. But I'm surrounded by good people. I thank God. All right. And I like that you say that when you put your mind to doing something, you follow through, you yeah. go there. Yeah. So, your advice, since we've talked about female musicians supporting mm. each other in mm. the industry, your mm. advice to other young ladies who adore you, look up to you, and like, oh, I want to get there also. <laughs> um, if you have passion for what you do, you keep pushing. Even when things don't work out, you keep pushing. You keep pushing until mm -hmm. things work out, you okay. know. Like, they shouldn't give up. Right. If you feel you believe in yourself, they should believe. If you believe in yourself, run after what you believe in, and one day, one time, you'll make it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, just to remind us, concert dates, where? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remind us. Serena. <laughs> <laughs> Serena is, uh, is on the 9th mm -hmm. of March. That is next Friday. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday, 10th, I'll be in Mukono. Okay. And then 11th, March. Freedom City, Freedom City. That's a busy weekend for you. Yeah. So, okay, we're excited. You said even if it's a few people, you will sing your heart out. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just can't wait to see them all. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, I've, I've rehearsed for so many months back. Everything's set. I'm just waiting for my people to come <laughs> and on time because Serena, I want to start the show myself. Okay. I won't have curtain raises and mm -hmm. all that. Yes. What time will that be? Like eight. Okay. I have to start by eight so that I, you know, I do everything on time. I don't want to rush, mm -hmm. you know. I have to present everything that I have for them. I have a lot in stock. I have surprises. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> we like the sound of that. We like the sound of that. Yes, mm -hmm. and they should come. Uh, Mokono, mm -hmm. I know that's a sure deal. Mm -hmm. I went to school in Mokono. <laughs> if they don't come, <laughs> it's a problem. It's mm -hmm. a big problem. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Freedom City, please, guys, come. Let's fill that place up. 
Okay. Please come, come. Well, Rima, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much and, for and, hosting and me and sharing and sharing here with us. It's always nice to get to know you better. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I have had a question for you. Mm-hmm. How do you keep yourself looking so beautiful, young, flawless, <laughs> stressless, like, I, like you know? Um. What, what can I say? What can I say? Oh, oh, say uh-oh. something. Okay, smile. I don't like let I smile. Smile. Don't let don't let anyone take away your happiness. That I kind of go by that principle. And drink lots of water. <laughs> that's, <laughs> the that's all I can say. People drink water, Chris. Lots of water. like lots of water, and they don't look like you. Like I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> is it nature? Uh, yes, I think that my was mom. the time I spotted your mom. Mm-hmm. She's beautiful. Oh, for uh, we had gone for what? What's his What's his name? Mm-hmm. Oh, the. The concert, yes, oh, at Oliver mm-hmm. Mtukuzi. Mm-hmm. Yes. I spotted you. I think that was your mom. Yes, yes. And then your sister. Mm-hmm. I think it's just in your, like, it's just <laughs> in your blood. There's nothing much you do. I think it's just part of you. <laughs> you have put me on the spot here. But thank you, Rama. Thank you so mm. much. So your last song, your own song. Mm. Tell us about this song. Banyabo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like I told you. I grew up with my mom. Mm-hmm. single mom she was my mom she was my dad she was my everything like she was everything to us and i sang about what she went through as a single mother mm-hmm. and this song go- song goes out to everyone you can be married or you can be staying with a husband but you're taking on all the responsibilities mm-hmm. of a father or like mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh it goes out to everyone who has a mother everyone who respects a woman and it's one of those songs that I feel everyone should listen to or should dedicate to those people that fe- that they feel have been very productive to their lives. It mm. it doesn't have to be a woman because people are like, Banyabo, okay now, is it only women who are going to attend your show? No, no. Of course not. even the men have their mothers. They have mm-hmm. their women, you know. Mm-hmm. They have their sisters. You I mean mm-hmm. it join it, 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 it puts everyone together, you know. The, the small, the big, the tall, the short, <laughs> you know, uh, the married, the single ones, mm-hmm. Catholic, Muslim, you know, like... It cuts across to It everyone. cuts across. Mm-hmm. And it's... I think it's one of the, the songs that I've done and all people have the same feeling towards it. Because I always sing about love. Mm-hmm. And some people are not so in love. They are tired. They are done. Like, like... <laughs> I'm every time don't love tell songs. me your love love things yeah don't <laughs> tell me don't tell me your love love things but this time around <laughs> everyone's like oh that song I dedicated to my mom I dedicated to my wife like it is it is a great song and I felt like it's the right song mm-hmm. to headline my concert Banyabo. Okay.